This is metal mesh. When we add metal mesh to a custom vehicle build, it can really take that build to the next level. Not only does metal mesh look great, but it can help to protect our speakers as a speaker grill. We could also use it to cover the port of a subwoofer box to keep things from getting inside or to protect other equipment. Now when we purchase the mesh, it comes flat like this. How can we perfectly form it and make it match the shape of our install? Well, as you guys know, here on this channel, I do car audio tutorials, reviews, and build log videos just like this one. Let's take a look at the step-by-step -step process in this video where I add molded metal mesh to the amplifier rack beauty panel for the Jeep. So to get started with making the metal mesh, we're gonna need a couple of different things. Let's take a look. So here we have some of our template pieces from before. You'll notice that that shape here is the same as these three shapes, which are gonna have the metal mesh in them on the amplifier rack. Now this is literally my master template that I used in order to make the holes on the amplifier rack. So if you wanna see how I made this particular piece, go back and watch the video. I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen right now. Now these pieces on the other hand were pieces that dropped out of the amplifier rack when I copied this hole cut out to that. Now we're also going to need this metal mesh. For this application I picked this hex mesh. I think it goes good with the, the vibe of the Jeep since everything is hard straight lines. I got this from my show sponsor Mobile Solutions and they have a ton of other options. Some circular mesh, some diamond mesh. Lots of different options. Now something that you'll kind of learn with experience is that mesh like this that has a finer hole pattern doesn't necessarily need a whole lot of pull. In other words, we don't need to draw the material very much in order to really get a good look on the shape. Now if we were using a mesh that had a bigger open area, in other words, these holes were much larger, you would wanna pull it further in order to be able to see that it's actually molded. But since this is a fine mesh, I'm only gonna be molding this a half inch, and that's what these pieces are here. Obviously, this piece is still only a quarter of an inch, so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to a half inch piece. We'll cut that in a second here, but the final thing we're gonna need is this guy. This is a hydraulic shot press. So I'll link this guy down in the video description. It goes for anywhere between $120 to $150. Now I understand that if you're only doing a couple builds a year, this is probably not an expense that you wanna deal with by buying this particular tool. So I do have some ideas for different ways that you can actually compress the metal mesh that I'm gonna show you guys towards the end of the video. So I have my generic shapes. What we need to do now is create what's called a mold box. And that's what we're gonna put the mesh inside of and then mold it. So let's get started making that. I'll start with tracing the rough size that I'll need to a piece of wood and then I'll cut these pieces of wood on the table saw. Next up, I've created some side pieces and I'll add a chamfer 45. You'll see what this is for in a second. Now that all the pieces for the mold box are created, I can nail the side pieces to the side of the mold box. Now if you remember, I mentioned that I need to transfer this quarter inch piece to a half inch piece, so I lay down some template tape and then stick the two together. I then drill a hole in preparation for inserting the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit on the router. The quarter inch spiral flush trim bit allows me to cut out the inside of this shape and I'm going to want to make sure that I hang on to the piece that drops out. You'll always end up having this little nib here, so we can take care of that just by sanding it with some sandpaper. I have my mold box made now, and in case you were wondering, the reason I added those chamfered corners is it just makes this piece just flow into it a little bit easier, but it's important to have these side pieces because it keeps everything perfectly lined up. So I obviously have a base for the mold box, I have a top, and now I have my mold pieces too. Now the thing is, if I were to try molding the metal mesh with this current setup once this is attached inside the box, these pieces 
are gonna shear the mesh too much. There's too sharp of an edge. So we need to take these inside male pieces and we're gonna add a chamfer around the outside of them. It's time for some more router action. There we have it, all the chamfers are applied. And again, this is so that the metal mesh will form nicely. We won't have to worry about it being too harsh of a cut and then therefore even cutting the metal. So this is probably one of the most important steps. We wanna make sure that everything's lined up perfectly. So here's kind of the trick for doing that. So first of all, this female piece that I cut, notice that it's the same exact size as our baseboard. That helps me line it up like so. Now next, I'm gonna take these pieces and I'm gonna put template tape on, and it doesn't have to be a crazy amount of template tape, especially if you want to reuse this mold box. In other words, pull the mold part out of it and do a different design in the future. Don't use a ton of template tape, otherwise you won't be able to get this thing apart. So I'm gonna peel off the backing paper. I'm gonna put this in here, but I'm not going to push it down yet. I'm just going to carefully line it up. Now here's the trick, what I did, is I made this piece here. This, see how it's kind of like a comb? Well, the reason I did that, first of all, it's hard to cut that on a table saw safely to cut these smaller pieces, so I just cut most of the way through, and now I can just break these off like so, and this is quarter inch material, so that gives me the quarter inch gap that I created with that router bit earlier. So I know that this material is a quarter inch thick, so by sandwiching those broken pieces in there, I know that I've created a quarter inch gap. So with this piece centered perfectly within the cutout, I can now apply pressure. So that's stuck in place, and then I can fish these guys out. Now that these are centered, I need to figure out a way to make this, the female piece, stick to the top. And that's actually pretty simple. We're just going to apply a couple of pieces of template tape. Now when we open this up, it will pull the female with it. And there we have the male positions all perfectly in alignment. Now just to give yourself a visual indicator, so you remember when you go to line this thing up with mesh inside of it, just do something like that. I'm going to align this here, and I just wanna make a line, a little Sharpie mark right here, so I know where to cut it. Now something I like to do here is take a real small piece of template tape it doesn't take much at all. We're gonna stick it on something in the middle here. Now, when we put the metal mesh into the box, the reason I do that little piece of tape is you want to make sure that this isn't slightly askew in the box. It's gonna matter because you want one of these lines that's kind of on the metal mesh in the pattern, you want that to line up with the line in here on the shape. See how that's perfectly lined up there? Boom. Time for the moment of truth. You guys ready? Ta-da! Oh yeah, that formed really good actually. What you wanna look for here when you open this up is you wanna see if there's any tears in the mesh. And in this case, there isn't. Now if you do have any tears, the way you can alleviate that problem is increase the gap size. In other words, we'd wanna shrink these pieces down more. 
you use a rabbit bit like this, what that allows you to do is you could then partially cut into that wood piece, shrinking it down, and then you flush trim it to completely remove the rest of the material. Whether or not the mesh will tear is something that you'll kind of get a feel for as you do this more often. Open mesh like this that has a large open area is typically a lot more forgiving and easier to mold, but some of the stuff that has a much smaller open area could be a little bit more difficult, so you might want to immediately start with a gap that's larger than a quarter of an inch in that case. Check that out though, just a ton of dimension. Let's see what it looks like in the amp rack. All right, we'll get this loaded in from the back side. Like so. Dude! It looks sweet. Maybe I'm a little bit overly excited. Check that out though. I like how back here you can really tell that it kind of sticks up because it actually gets up higher than our viewing angle at this part of the mesh. That is gonna look so cool over the amplifiers and processor. Now, if you guys don't own a hydraulic press, there are a couple of other techniques that you can use in order to sandwich this mold box so that you can mold your metal mesh. This is gonna sound kind of funny and it's one of those duct tape engineering type solutions but I've heard of people using a heavier vehicle like a truck. They'll actually jack the truck up a little bit like you were changing a tire. They'll put the mold box on the ground underneath the tire and slowly let the tire down on top of it. I guess whatever gets the job done. Another method I've used in the past before I had the hydraulic press is you could take this box and carefully drill a couple of holes in it in different locations. Ideally, you would do one in each corner. You just have to be obviously more careful careful that you're working around your shape. Through those holes, you would insert a large bolt and on the other side, you would attach a nut. You can then use an impact driver or just use a wrench and slowly tighten that nut down until it sandwiches the mesh together. So hopefully those two different methods will help you guys out. In the next video, I'm gonna be securing all the LED lights to the edge lit acrylic on the back side of the amplifier beauty panel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that video or any future videos. You can also catch up with this full build here on screen. Special thanks goes out to the Patreon support team, Brian, Ali, EJ, Emmanuel, Roy Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon supporters. Thank you to them for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to help support the channel, it would mean the world to me. It really helps me to make more videos. You can check out the details on that here on screen as well. Thanks again for watching.